Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Mark with Bryce Vaught. Welcome to day two of Mark chapter nine. Today we're going to be covering verses 14 through 29, and it's a really interesting event. Again, this is a part of the section in chapters eight through 10 where Mark is seeking to highlight some key events and teaching from Jesus to encourage Jesus' disciples uh, and to teach them what faithful discipleship looks like in the face of suffering and disappointment. And this passage today that we're looking at is coming right off the heels of the passage that we looked at yesterday, um, the transfiguration. And we see again that Jesus went up on the mountain. He took three disciples with him, was transfigured before them. And uh, as they come down off the mountain, we see that there's this large crowd and an argument is taking place. There's a bit of hostility, confusion, probably shouting. And Jesus, as he's inquiring what this scene is about, we find that there is a father who has brought his child Uh, who's demon-possessed to Jesus' disciples for them to cast this demon out. And this father says, Teacher, your disciples were not able to cast out this demon. And Jesus is a bit frustrated. He says, Oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? Whether that's directed at the disciples, the crowd, there's some conjecture there. But this, we've come to see that this child has been possessed, influenced by this demon since he was a child. And this man asks if Jesus could heal him. And Jesus says, if you believe, all things are possible. And so Jesus casts this demon out. And upon seeing this, the disciples ask this important question, why could we not cast it out? To which Jesus replies, he says, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Some translations say prayer and fasting. There's a few key points I want us to look at. Uh, Again, that suffering is certainly expected in this life. And sometimes suffering is the result of demonic forces at work in our world. Now, it's important to understand that demonic forces, um, they are very powerful but they're not all powerful. The apostle Paul refers to Satan as the God of this age, which really kind of gives us some insight that he has some ability and some allotted freedom to do as he wills. And in response to the enemy's presence on the earth, God has instituted the church to be empowered by the Holy Spirit as a community to push back the evil forces at work on the earth. If you go back and look at Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ in the book of Matthew, Jesus makes this statement. He says that that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The thing is, the gates are not necessarily an offensive weapon. They're kind of a, a, a a line of defense, which really implies that the church should exist in the world as a force that exposes evil and, and resists the work of Satan throughout the world and in people's lives. And yet we see that in this passage, the church's effectiveness is largely influenced by faith that lives in dependence upon Christ and his power at work in us. And we see that faith is essential. Jesus rebukes uh, the crowd saying, oh, faithless generation. And he says, all things are possible for one who believes. And yet it's not faith in terms of how strong your faith is, but it's really about who your faith is in that determines our effectiveness. Radical God-pleasing faith is not about being totally doubtless, but about being totally dependent. That The reality is all of us struggle with some level of doubt intellectually, emotionally, and as we go through life, we wonder about things and we question things. And Jesus welcomes that. Even the father in this story, he says, I believe, help my unbelief. We will all struggle with different doubts throughout our faith journey as we seek to grow in our understanding of who God is and what he's called us to do. But... Faith that pleases God, it 
wrestles with doubts, but it wrestles with doubts in a a dependence of who Jesus is. It rests in, in his identity and finished work. And we experience this power as we lean into him with prayer, yielding our our lives to the work and power of the Spirit. And it's as we do this that we push back the evil forces at work in our midst. And that's my prayer for us today, that we would accomplish that and see God's power and glory at work in us as we depend and lean into Him. And we appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.